Hi, I'm Laura Brody, and in this video, Melusine, my sculpture, gets her head, finally. Thank you to Heidi Marie Photography for these beautiful photos of her. In past videos in the making of Melusine, I've shown the structure of her and making of her body. In this one, I go into details on her face, which is such an important part of any figural sculpture. Her face started out as a pregnancy pillow, which is oddly appropriate because Melusine the fairy is known for being a mother ten times over. I did a basic sculpting of the face using upholstery needles and curved lampshade needles to sort of tuck in the face, and then did felt over it to sort of reshape the features and make them come out a little more clearly. Both the pillow and the felt were donated to me by different friends. I spent a lot of time looking in the mirror when I was doing the sculpt, trying to figure out where the eye fold should go, where the nose folds, where that little crease right above the lip should be. I worked on the face at home and then worked on the body over at my studio along with my assistant, Devin Fance. I'm on the left, she is on the right. Devin was helping me sew on all of those scales that go up and down Melusine's body. This also gives you a good idea of the scale of Melusine. She's quite tall. Once the base of the face was ready, I just put it in sort of like a bobblehead, honestly, and sort of tried to position it on Ms. Elosine to see what would be the best. I like leaving it a little flexible so you can change expressions. After the face was sculpted and shaped, I then decided on all the fabrics I needed to cover it. This took a really long time because it made a big difference deciding what areas should get which colors, what planes would work best. I ended up having to go back and forth and changed it afterwards because that little bridge of the nose underneath that I'd done in the blue of the upper nose ended up looking a little bit like she had a runny nose later on, so it didn't work quite as well. I decided to embroider her eyes and lips. I really liked the texture that that offered and the depth. There's something really mesmerizing about being able to look directly into the eye. You can see you get the little different flecks of color. And that pupil is a covered button, the types of black buttons that you usually see on, say, a tuxedo jacket. The eyeballs are done in embroidery thread in cream and off-white. Again, that texture makes it a little bit nicer. Devin Fance donated me these curtains she wasn't using anymore that had strips of different colors, pastels, and I ended up using them as braids for Melusine's hair. It worked really well, and it's so lush. I wanted that kind of waterfall of hair in the front. The back of Melusine's head is covered in a veil that was made from old sari fabric. There's a company called Darn Good Yarn, which turns these old saris into skirts friend of mine donated the skirts to me and I reused them. About maybe 85% of Melusine is made out of reused materials and clean waste. If you look into the little portholes at her uh, armholes and over her heart, she is stuffed with coconut milk containers and corks and a whole variety of other clean plastic waste. Melusine means several things to me. Her spine is made out of supplement bottles, the supplements that I need to help keep myself alive with my thyroid condition. And she also represents emotional labor. And she's stuffed with waste. So much of us stuff so many things inside of us. And this is an emblem of that, but also how you can make it beautiful. Melusine now stands eight feet tall. She's probably gonna be nine feet once she gets her wings and her arms. Going to be bent, one hand on the hip, another one on her cane, ready to take on the world. Thanks so much for taking the time here. Come on back for more and I will show you the rest of Melusine as she develops. 